Javi Glad has played throughout the season. First down. Fakes to Cobb. And the completion on the near sideline. And there's Deep Stella, newly signed, a contract extension, making his 62nd catch of the year. Well, and, and on pace for his best season as a pro. I think mean, over 1,100 yards is, is Dave Stella's pace. He has been money and clutch as receiver for Kevin Glenn on second down situations. And yeah, Marcel Belfe wanted to get him signed to a new deal because at the end of the year, there was no option year for Dave Stella. It was free agency. So they got it fixed up and taken care of prior to the end of the season. Eight for 128 last week, his best game of the year. Second and two, the toss to the left side. And Cobb puts his head down and drives for another Ticat first down. So both teams have moved the ball well in their opening series. The Eskimos coming away empty-handed. Kevin Glenn's got his eye on that Edmonton end zone. Speaking of, of impressive paces for the season, Kevin Glenn is in that category as well. And uh, it was interesting reading some of the comments and clips from Kevin Glenn leading into this game, how he is his own worst critic. And feels that he's missed some opportunities this season. Maurice Mann in motion. Glenn looking downfield, and Arlen Bruce unable to, or did he make the catch down at the one? Excuse me, tight coverage, and Arlen Bruce wins a battle, and does come down with the football. Well, Arlen Bruce would not be denied here. It was, it was interesting, Chris, because you're right. It looked like in this battle, I believe it was Chris Thompson that he's fighting with down the field. He's going to adjust underneath and, and fight his way back through the arm of Thompson to get to that ball. It was almost like Arlan Bruce was saying, this baby's mine. A little quiet of late, and he said, get me the ball early. Wanted to get into action a little quicker, and that's a good way to get Arlan Bruce into the game, setting up the Ticats first and goal at the Edmonton 1. And no question from that second replay, that was a clean catch. Quinton oh. Porter comes in. Short-yarded situation. And Cobb off the left side, spinning for the touchdown. Fifth time this year, the Ticats have scored a touchdown on their opening drive. Well, and that's game planning as well as the coaching staff script the first set of plays. Kevin Glenn executes them well. And there's a nice mix in the first drive. A little DeAndre Cobb, nice throw to their number one star receiver, in our land, Bruce DeAndre Cobb finishes it off with a nice spin move to get to the goal line. Seventh touchdown of the year for Cobb. Fifth on the ground. The extra point is through. And the Ticats take first blood here in Edmonton. Find out how you can create your own plays at NissanArmchairHero.com. Well, there's Arlan Bruce. I want to show you Mark Way McDaniel as well and Chris Thompson on that big play down the field. As you mentioned, Chris, Kevin Glenn wanting to go to his star receiver early in this football game. Look at Mark Way McDaniel and how wide open he is with safety. Richardson up there short in the box. He is wide open and still goes to Arlan Bruce who makes the catch for him. Tristan Jackson on the return, a good one for the Eskimos. Up near the 45-yard line on that return. Seven plays, 85 yards, a touchdown march to open the game for Hamilton. The ball out over the Eskimo 40. Contributions from DeAndre Cobb throughout that drive, not just the one-yard run for the touchdown. Marcel Belfe talking yesterday about the balance they're looking for in their offense, and boy, it was certainly on display on that first drive of the game for the Tiger Cats. Yeah, nice play calling. Head coach, Mike Gibson, the offensive coordinator. Edmonton to Play action fake, and Ray on the roll. Now throws, he's got Fred Stamps in the Ticat territory at the Hamilton 53-yard line. So that's 15 for Stamps. Well, his four games of the season with injury and Fred Stamps is obviously a welcome addition back into the lineup. Eight starts so far in the season and last week contributed with six catches. Just shy of 100 yards last week, but for the big play, they're going to look for Fred Stamps. Stamps without a touchdown since week two, and it's hard to believe that Ricky Ray has thrown only one touchdown pass in the last six games. Well, here's McCurdy. 
turns back, still behind the line of scrimmage, and finally he'll be wrestled down. I'm not sure if that was a reverse or was that because Kelvin McCarty may be thinking about throwing that football. He, he, well, it looked like he was he was coming around slowly and and possibly thinking about it, but there was good penetration there by Shannon James off the edge. That changed his mind in a, in a hurry. Number 37 came up there and, and really shut the door because of the depth of that run. You, you're right. It looked like he may have wanted to throw it. Terrific play by James who forced him back and then ended up making the tackle. So second and long and Ray over the middle. Jason Barnes has the catch and a first down at the Ticat 39-yard line. Barnes quiet in Moncton. Just one catch for 10 yards last week. Well, this is a pro football play, and, and what I mean by that is there's so much risk involved with throwing the ball that deep and, and over the middle like this because there's lots of traffic. You can see Shannon James there and also Dylan Barker, the safety, but the, in order to do this, you need protection up front. Watch Ricky Ray wait, step in, is able to release that without anybody in his face. Big second down conversion for the Eskimos who are last in that department. Although over 60% last week in Moncton on second down conversions. And another catch for Stamps. This short yardage is he's tossed down by the Canadian on the corner, Ryan Hines making his first start there. Well, in for Will Hayward and you know Ryan Hines on that corner will be tested. You, you know that they're going to try and put Edmonton Fred Stamps out there and see if they can't maybe get him sneaking up with little plays like they just ran, those little hitch passes, and then try and get one in behind him. Coach is saying he's not there because of a ratio issue. He's there because he's earned the spot right now. Second and seven. Flag down, open man, and Scott's got the catch. And Hines will toss him out. Let's find out what the flag's all about. Yeah, see, see what this flag is about. But again, there, there's a little out in front of Hines. Tyler Scott out of the University of Western Ontario. Windsor native. And awaiting the verdict from Glenn Johnson. Offside. Hamilton number 95. That penalty's declined. First down. Justin Hickman offside. This time it's Tyler Scott. Last play it was Fred Stamps, but there, there's Scott there, and there is Ryan Hines. And look, you can see that he's giving him some room in, in front of him. He's going to give him a nice cushion, 12 yards or so on that wide side of the field, and then he'll just sit down in front of him until Hines starts to sneak up, and then they'll try and get in behind him. 11 and a first down as they convert on second and long back to back. Another flag down, and it's released to McCarty. Kelvin McCarty inside, and he'll be stopped up at the 16. Shannon James there once again, along with Markeith Knowlton. Well, speaking of open receivers, the Kevin Glenn had one, went to Arlan Bruce the last time. That time, Ricky Ray, if, if he sees Tyler Scott, who was working once again on Ryan Hines there, who jumped an inside route. He has a touchdown. Penalties against Hamilton and Edmonton discussing the options with Glenn Johnson. Offside, Hamilton, number 71. That penalty's declined. Second down. This time, Garrett McIntyre offside. They take the nine-yard gain. Here's Tyler Scott here. I just want to show you Hines, and, and this time he, he kind of sneaks in and, and sort of fades away, and watch how wide open Tyler Scott is. Now, the pocket started to collapse on Ray, so he doesn't get to see it, but there's a wide open receiver standing in the end zone. Second and one from the 16, and McCarty will have the first down for the Eskimos, crashing down around the 13-yard line. A nice drive by the Edmonton Eskimos to that really was kick-started by that throw over the middle to Jason Barnes. It's a high-risk throw, and, and Ray put it in there in the money, and Barnes makes a catch in front of Dylan Barker. The drive continues, and now they've got some momentum heading in. Kevin Strasser again has started this game with tremendous play call, like he did last week. First down, Matt Bertrand in, and Ricky Ray looks like he may have changed the play. He'll give it to McCarty straight ahead, and Calvin McCarty will pound it to the six. Well, it looks like the Eskimos can get a first down without scoring. 
Have to get inside the three, and they need three yards. So far, the key to this drive, success on first down. Ninth play of the drive, back to McCurdy. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as he falls to about the four-yard line. Jamal Johnson in on the tackle. Jamal Johnson was just four tackles back of the league lead coming in and, and was right there, as was Garrett McIntyre, who crashes down it. Really, McIntyre makes the play off the edge, and, and when he does, he allows his linebacker to get there. Watch McIntyre crash inside, and, and Jamal Johnson then fill from there. He crashes, he cuts off any type of block possibility so that his linebacker can scrape to it. Well, Richie Hall has his first big decision of the game. It's third. And a full yard, and the offense stays out. And they split it up. Ray rolls one. That's McCurdy. Touchdown. Eskimos convert on a third down gamble. And they're convert away from tying the score. That's the side of Calvin McCarty that, that we've talked about many times about his, he is a triple threat. He's a great blocker. He can rush the football, but he also can catch it out of the backfield. He's going to go on Otis Floyd here in a man-to-man -man situation. Because he has outside leverage on Floyd, Floyd can't look back to the ball. He's chasing desperately to catch up to McCarty. McCarty makes a shoot sure catch. Fifth touchdown of the year for Calvin McCarty. Game tied late first quarter. Game tied at Commonwealth where Ryan Rashog's on the sidelines. Chris, thank you very much. Kevin Strauss, the offensive coordinator, has been looking for a way to find more accountability on his offensive line. Too many guys busting roots in practice, the quarterback missing too many guys. So this is what they came up with right in the middle of the team's dressing room. That is the accountability board. The way it works, every day in practice, every play is graded, every player is graded, and it is posted for everybody to see. The design is not to make anybody look foolish, but certainly create Chris, under this kind of a system, nobody's able to hide and certainly nobody able to slack off through the week, at least not with everybody knowing. Accountability. Good idea. McCarty's touchdown is third in two weeks. Has tied it. That's Marcus Thigpen on the return. We've got a flag on the return. We're in the final minute of this opening quarter. Well, I like that accountability chart. You get too many X's beside your name in that chart, and your teammates walk by and see that chart. Holding Hamilton number 44. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Ray Marius, the culprit. Yeah, that's a good idea by Kevin Strasser to just allow the, the, the team to govern itself. When you walk by those accountability charts and you see a name with all the X's beside him you're kind of walking by that player saying hey you better get in your playbook I, I can see I'm I'm on defense and I can see you're not ready to play this game by that accountability chart it's a pretty good idea for the Eskimos maybe not in the television truck here I'm not sure we want to do that no, let's not do that there's Cobb with some good first down production 10 plays 66 yards for the Eskimos in their touchdown drive well, it's it's important. The, the accountability factor is is so crucial. This was the big play. I believe that was second and 16 to Jason Barnes over the middle. But for everyone to execute their responsibility, and then all of a sudden collectively that happens, you get to the end zone. What a good run on first down for DeAndre Cobb, who has back-to-back 100-yard -back games after one in his previous 24 starts. They give him the ball again, why not? They'll drag Mo Lloyd back into the game up to the 30-yard line, and the Ticats have a first down. Pretty good offense on both sides of the ball in the opening quarter at Commonwealth. 
good first quarter, and our first quarter stats are brought to you by Tim Hortons, proud sponsor of the CFL. Really well played offensive first quarter when you think it's only been three series, two for the Edmonton Eskimos. They have doubled the time of possession because of it. Hamilton Tiger Cats had one series that lasted almost five minutes. Again, very good play calling. Both running backs involved. Love the pass by Ricky Ray to Jason Barnes over the middle. So good offensive play so far. No punts in the first quarter and, and both teams uh, showing balance in their attack with exactly the same number of yards through 15 minutes. You know, both teams will script their first 10, 12 plays and, and those were well executed in that first quarter. And, you know, no turnovers, no errant throws. I, I think both teams offensively certainly showed up ready to play this game. Now, it ma now the defenses have to react. Maybe more pressure, send some blitz. So the Thai Cats with their second possession of the game, and they already got one first down here. With DeAndre Cobb, punch formation to the short side of the field. And they look that way. And here's our play McDaniel with a good first up to the 45 and another Ticat first down.